The grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Welcome to Trinity's Good Friday service. Our last hymn, if you can read from the hymn book, um, it is When I Surveyed the Wondrous Cross, verses, I'm sorry, Voices United 149. Um, there seems to a line is missing in the bulletin, so if we could just read it from the hymn book. This service will proceed unannounced. You will see that midway you will be invited to the cross to lay down a stone at the foot of the cross. The stone is symbolic of our, our burdens, symbolic of our prayers for ourselves and for our world. You're invited to come to the cross from either side of the aisle and then return back through the center aisle. And more than one person can be at the cross at the time. Just take your time. This is the time to, to meet here and to be um, present here and throughout the whole service. And of course, if you prefer to remain seated, you are also welcome to do that. When we come before the cross in faith, as we do today, we are reminded once again of the depth of love given on the cross, given for all. This day we stand at the foot of the cross to find meaning. We gather to seek understanding of the cross, to remember how Jesus laid down his life for his friends, for his followers, and for the world. We seek comfort as we remember our needs and the concerns of our hearts. We gather to remember the world around us. Our world is so filled with heartache. Our world is so full of stress and distress. A world so full of despair. So today we remember. In the shadow of the suffering is the suffering of Jesus. In the shadow of our weakness is the vulnerability of Christ. In the shadow of our pain is the God who cried out, we are never rejected. Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. Being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Remember how generous the Lord was. He was rich, but he became poor for your sake to make you rich out of his poverty. Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. Being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Remember how generous the Lord Jesus was. He was rich, but he became poor for your sake, to make you rich out of his poverty. It happened, you know. It happened, and we not, need not be surprised to be here this morning. And we need to be here. And we know that God will give us strength to see it through. The Bible gives many reasons for this day, but our United Church statement of faith, a song of faith, expresses it this way. So filled with the Holy Spirit was he, that in him people experienced the presence of God among them. We sing praise to God incarnate. Jesus announced the coming of God's reign, a commonwealth, not a dominion, but of peace and justice and reconciliation. He healed the sick and fed the hungry. 
He forgave sins and freed those held by powers beyond themselves. He crossed barriers of race, class, culture, and gender. He preached and practiced unconditional love, love of God, love of neighbor, love of friend, and love of enemy. And he commanded his followers to love one another as he loved them. Because his witness to love was so threatening, those exercising power sought to silence Jesus. He suffered abandonment and betrayal, state-sanctioned torture and execution. He was crucified. And we who love him as best we can have come to be with him at this time to hold one another in our grief. And through word, music, and reflection, we come together in worship. Let us pray. God of community, we gather in your presence in this safe place. We gather to hear the story of love embodied in Jesus and expressed through his death on a cross outside a city wall. We gather to reflect, to remember, and to sing of that love. In this time of sharing in the story, your story, and our story, may we know your presence in our silence and in our song. Amen. invite you to stand for the hymn, and then as we sing Taze, we will remain seated.
Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me, from the words of my groaning? O my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted, they trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb, who kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth, and since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me, like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a pot shard, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. From the horns of the wild oxen, you have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it.
After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kindred Valley to a place where there were, was a garden which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees. And they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, he stepped back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, Whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you're looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. And Caiaphas was the one who advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside the gate. So the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, you are not also one of the man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them, warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have also always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all our people come together. I have said nothing in secret. 
Why do you ask me? As those who heard what I said to them, they know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Anna sent, sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, are, You are not also one of the disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, the cock crowed. Then the religious leaders took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and be able to eat the Passover meal. So Pilate went out and said to them, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, if this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your own law. The leaders replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not of your nation, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After Pilate had said this, he went out to the Jewish leaders and told them, I find no case against him. But you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Not this man, but Barabbas.
Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him and saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the religious leaders saw Jesus, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The people answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on Pilate tried to release him, but the people cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of Caesar. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now, it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. Pilate said to the crowd, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed Jesus over to be crucified. So they took Jesus And carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many people read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priest said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but instead, this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written.
Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen to me. Compassionate God, as we remember Jesus, whose love for humanity brought him to the cross. We remember the world for which he died. We remember the steamless fabric of creation in which we are doing our best to tear. Gambling for its possessions, felling forests, burning fossil fuels, polluting the rivers, overfishing the seas. We pray for forgiveness for what we are doing to your world. We remember the people who are suffering from drought in Ethiopia and Sudan, and we pray that the response of other nations will be swift and compassionate. We remember places and nations where there is conflict, and we hold the people of Ukraine and Russia in our hearts. Remembering the conflict in our own nation, the sharp divisions between rich and poor. We pray for a fair distribution of resources and compassionate care for the most fragile in our society. We remember conflicts very close to home, recognizing that we have a part in them. And we pray for healing, O oh God. We remember now all who are suffering in body, mind, and spirit. We believe in a mystery. Just as Jesus shared our mortality and pain as he died on the cross, so we are with those who suffer now and know that your wounded hands stretch out with healing and hope. We offer these prayers, O God, and to who we offer the prayers of our hearts. Amen.
when the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now, the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the religious leaders did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you may also believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one, because of his fear of the religious authorities, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed Jesus' body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, 
bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths according to the burial custom of his people. There was a garden in the place where he was crucified. And in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. So now as we stand at the cross, may God, who in Jesus shared human life and death, comfort each one of us. May we that know that whatever we have done, we are forgiven. Whatever is happening in our lives, God is with us. Whoever we are, God loves us. So go in hope of resurrection now and always. Amen. <laughs>